All right, let's talk technology and the state of startups across Africa. So, the rate of startup failure, right, in Nigeria is at 61%. This is the highest amongst the top three biggest tech ecosystems and investment destinations in Africa. A report by WeTracker in collaboration with Green Tech Capital Africa Foundation ranked Nigeria seventh on the continent in the top 10 countries with the most number of startup shutdowns. Joining me in studio to discuss this is Fisayo Durojaya, an associate investment analyst at EcoVC. Fisayo, you are welcome, sir. Thanks for joining me on the Global Business Report. Good morning to you. So let us begin with this talk. We're always talking about startup success. We talk about all the funds that come into Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa, and so on and so forth. But we don't talk about the failure rates. I would like to get your thoughts uh, initially. I believe it's a 54% failure rates across the continent of Africa. If you could uh, give me your thoughts. We're talking to emphasize the, uh, the importance of entrepreneurship. I think uh, in recent years, entrepreneurship seems to be the in pin, right? Uh, people just hear people say statements around, okay, I don't want to work for anybody. I just want to do my, my own things, uh, right? So, but with data like this, you know, just, you know, calls to uh, us to check, just some reality check around uh, how, you know, how interesting entrepreneurship can be. Uh, I think people need to understand that it's difficult. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. It's not the easiest, I mean, easier to just get a job and work for someone uh, than to try and build a business from scratch. So I think it's just uh, calling, calling us back to reality around uh, how, how difficult it is to, to, to be an entrepreneur, how difficult it is to build businesses across Africa, and how difficult it is to, uh, to deal with uh, regulatory you know, overhangs uh, around you. So it's just, uh, that's just my initial thoughts around it. Excellent. Let me get your thoughts on the top 10. I think the top 10, of course, Nigeria is seventh. Um, the top 10, if you, can, if you can give me your thoughts on some of these countries, because you visited them as part of what you do in your venture capital adventures across Africa. Ethiopia is top, Rwanda, Ghana, Zimbabwe. If you can give me thoughts on some of these countries and the issues I face. I mean, Ethiopia, 75%, my goodness. Give me your thoughts on some of the countries there and some of the conditions that they're seeing that are leading to some of these high rates. I mean, I think uh, with Ethiopia having 75% is a huge number, irrespective of how, how I want to look at it. 75% failure rate. So it means that if, if four businesses start together today, uh, three of them will fail. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's such a huge number. Uh, for me, I think the surprise uh, check in there for many people will be, will be Rwanda, uh, especially with the fact that uh, Rwanda had, had been touted as probably one of the best, uh, uh, best places uh, for doing business. I think it's probably ranking number one at part of the ease of doing business uh, index in, in Africa. So to see that uh, for, the, for the startup ecosystem, uh, to see that Rwanda is number two uh, with over 60% failure rates uh, calls to question uh, you know, the, uh, the, the policy initiatives uh, within that country, right? So I think it's just uh, one of those things. For me, I think one of the biggest things that we've seen from Rwanda is the fact that it's easier to start business in there, but it's also very difficult to run a business in there. So I think which is where, where the country is getting it wrong. Uh, the regulatory environment is, 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 too, is too steep for, uh, for entrepreneurs to, uh, to, to survive. You know, uh, people talk about you know, Rwanda being, be, being an important part of, of the East African ecosystem. But I dare say that uh, the economy of Rwanda is as small as Bagada. You know, so it's just thinking around how, how huge uh, the economy might be. Outside of Kigali, there is probably practically nothing else happening uh, in the country. So looking through uh, the list with Ethiopia, with Rwanda, uh, Nigeria being number seven, uh, with, I can see how difficult it is to run, uh, to operate business in Nigeria. But with Nigeria being number seven on the list uh, in Africa, it seems that we, we are maybe a step ahead of a few of our competitors. <laughs> so, if, uh, Kigali being the size of uh, Bagada. Okay, let me, let me get your thoughts on government support. Since you are talking about how tough it is to run a tech startup in these countries, where does government come in? What about government support? How can government support reduce these failure rates? I, think one thing we need gov I mean, for African government specifically, is to get out of our way, uh, right? Uh, if, if, if there is one thing they can do, it's just to, you know, stay out of it uh, and let innovation, you know, take its, its, its proper cost, let entrepreneurs drive some of these things. Uh, maybe on some side, you know, with some regulatory, uh, you know, uh, to ensure a level playing field for, for, for everybody. But I think the most important thing that government can do, at least at this stage, is just to, first of all, get, get out of the way of people. 
And once that is set, then uh, the next thing is just to ensure a level playing field. I mean, I saw uh, some of the few things that happened in Lagos uh, recently uh, regarding uh, the, the, the ban on, on bikes, uh, commercial bikes uh, in, in Lagos. And uh, some of the things we've been hearing around, uh, you know, other right alien uh, application, uh, right alien uh, startups in Lagos as well, and of course the recent entrance of of, of eco cabs uh, and how the regulatory posture seems to be that the government is 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 backing one against the other. I think that's that's a, that's a typical wrong sign uh, to you not know, to push. Uh, it doesn't drive innovation as 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 we should. So I think. Uh, Two things I think government should do. Number one, get out of our way and then ensure a level playing field for everybody in the ecosystem. Fantastic. All right, so we've talked government and what government needs to do. Let's talk about the private side, right, and the folks who are support funding. Uh, your good friend, uh, Taiwo Yewel, another tech analyst, he was here a couple weeks ago and we're talking about funding for startups. Now, on the private side, Fisayo, you've been around Africa and here in Nigeria. With regards to failure rates now, why aren't we seeing more support domestically for funding versus foreign? Why are we seeing more support? Uh, I think uh, for 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 tech for technology startups, I think it's it's still early stages uh, for me. Uh, I mean, people try to compare Yaba to Silicon Valley. I mean, there's really no basis for uh, for <laughs> for comparison. Uh, Silicon Valley has been is, has been evolving for years. Uh, Nigeria's innovation. Uh, our tech ecosystem just started a few years ago. So I think it's going to take some time, right? And I also think that uh, I believe with the way startups are going, uh, we've, we have some good examples of some startups that seem to be doing well and returning, most, more importantly, returning some money back to their investors. Once that starts to happen, then we can probably see more local participation. But now I think the people that can participate in the ecosystem are the people, uh, it's, it's definitely foreign capital uh, because I mean, to, to them, Africa is a, is a small pie uh, of their larger fund, so it's not necessarily a big thing for, uh, for them. But from African uh, billionaires or African entrepreneurs themselves to support uh, local, local entrepreneurs, it might take some time for us to see that to happen. Uh, so I just think the ecosystem should be allowed to gradually take its shape while uh, every other part, you know, you know, every other missing piece uh, comes in. Now, speaking, speaking of the, the African ecosystem, if we take Nigeria, for example, do you think there is too much of an emphasis on payment solutions? If you look at majority of the startups in Nigeria and across much of Africa, they seem to mostly be uh, focused on payments. Is that because of financial inclusion? I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, on that as well for startups. I mean, so if I, if I, if I, if I look around how... Uh, Tech ecosystem seems to, seem to have evolved uh, in in Nigeria, for, for instance. You know, back in the days, everybody in Nigeria was was starting some e-commerce platform uh, because they've seen Konga and Jumia and all of those uh, those other platforms. Then at some point, it was lending. Then at some point, it was savings. Then at some point, you know, uh, then payments and, and all of that. For me, I think that uh, one of the reasons why payments is an important part of uh, of Africa's tech system is that without payment, there is really no uh, e-commerce transaction. E-commerce tra e transaction cannot happen. My theory is that one of the reasons why uh, you know e-commerce failed woefully in 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 Nigeria specifically is the fact that by the time e-commerce e e started ahead of its time, because uh, by the time uh, Konga and Jumia were, were were launching their businesses, payment was not solved, delivery was not solved, right? Uh, and these are fundamental things that allow uh, you know, e-commerce to thrive. So once payment you know, was solved, then we, we could see that, yes, uh, platforms like savings platforms, uh, lending platforms could come into play, uh, irrespective. So my thoughts around all of that is that payment is still an important part of, of, of you know, Nigeria or Africa's tech ecosystem. So people are saying that, yes, maybe there are too many payment solutions. But it, until my grandmother in the village is able to pay uh, conveniently without without any you know, form of friction, until that farmer in Taraba is able to, to accept payment for his goods, uh, until you know, that, that woman in, in, in Borno is able to, to pay you know, seamlessly. I think payment is still a big problem in Africa, so I think it's, it's, it still has to be solved.
right, thank you. Okay, now you mentioned lending. You mentioned payments. You mentioned lending. I was asking about lending. There's an app that's uh, recently released. It's still in beta. It's still being tested. It's supposed to be able to track people that have the coronavirus. I think they're using, you know, geographical locations or something like that. But, but there's a pushback on privacy. And with lending, you've got a number of tech startups and tech companies that ask for, you know, to be able to look into your personal history and stuff before they can decide if you are credit worthy enough to be lent to. So very quickly, we've got about a minute or so, I want to get your thoughts on the privacy issue with technology and startups. About 30, 50 seconds, if you can, please. I mean, a lot of times, I think people uh, volunteer their private information to, uh, to some of these platforms. You want to collect money from me, show me your information. And I think it's, it's just... Uh, it's, it's a give and take thing. If you don't want to show me your information, then don't collect my money. Uh, so I think uh, those, uh, those are the things. Privacy concerns is, uh, I'm, I would be worried about privacy if uh, they get into my, uh, my phone and then without my permission, look through my data and, and, and you know, scan through my information. But if I was the one that volunteered my information for them, uh, to them because of what I want to get from them, so be it. That's, that's what it is. Uh, so I think that th those are my final thoughts. <laughs> Ayo Durojaye, thank you so much. Uh, Associates uh, at uh, Echo VC, thanks for joining us and talking about the tech startup uh, ecosystem in Africa.